Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a security podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey Nockreiner, your host, and this is the episode for the week starting April 2nd. Let's begin the week with a story about a major data breach. This story actually came out very late last Friday after I'd already released last week's episode. News came out that a major payment card processing company, this is a type of company that processes credit card transactions for many retailers and restaurants out there. Uh, Anyways, this big company, its name is Global Payments, announced that they had some sort of data breach and lost the data of up to 1.5 million credit card holders. Now, not a lot is known about the breach. They're still investigating it. They say it happened three weeks ago. They don't say exactly how. But they do say that the attackers seem to have gotten away with the track two data of up to 1.5 million credit card customers. And in the credit card industry, the track two data is basically the magnetic strip on credit cards. So this data has the actual credit card number, the credit card's expiration date, and also some other optional information information credit card companies can store there. It doesn't have the the credit card user's name or their social security number or anything like that. Nonetheless, this is a very, very big data breach. As a result, a few days ago, Visa actually revoked Global Payments uh, PCI compliance. Uh, So they're no longer PCI compliant, but they did have PCI compliance when this breach happened. So I suspect this breach is going to have resounding effects on the PCI DSS uh, certification and auditing a lot of companies have to go through. And the security industry will probably watch this breach for, for months to come. Another big story this week centers around some Java vulnerabilities that affect Mac and some real-world malware that's actually leveraging this vulnerability. First of all, if you're not aware, uh, do know that Apple released a Java update for OS X, both uh, Snow Leopard and Lion, this week. If you haven't got that update, you should definitely go get it. This update actually fixes a bunch of Oracle Java vulnerabilities, which Oracle patched way back in February. Apple's just catching up with these uh, updates now. Unfortunately, however, bad guys have been exploiting these vulnerabilities in the wild, or at least one of them. There's a particular piece of malware that was highlighted in the news this week called Flashback. Flashback is uh, some Mac malware that actually was first seen September of last year. When it was first seen, it masqueraded as a Flash installer, which if you installed this fake Flash installer on your Mac computer, it would Uh, hijack your computer and start stealing usernames and passwords. Well, this week a new variant of Flashback was discovered and announced that actually leverages one of these zero-day, or zero-day to Apple anyways, Java vulnerabilities, uh, which was unpatched when this malware first came out. Uh, Flashback leveraged this vulnerability so that if you just visited a website, you could get this malware on your computer, and it would then go ahead and install itself, uh, try to steal usernames and passwords and share that with the attacker's command and control uh, server. Another piece of news that came out this uh, week was a company called Dr. Webb, who's actually analyzed this malware, says that the flashback malware has actually infected over half a million, they say up to 600,000 Mac computers. Interestingly, about 274 of those infected Mac computers is in Cupertino, California, which is where Apple has its headquarters. So this is proof positive that Max, up to 600,000 Max, are infected with malware and can have attacks just like PCs. So the moral of the story, definitely make sure you've applied Apple's OS X Java update, which came out this week. And second of all, you might want to think about Apple security, as I mentioned last week. There is Apple antivirus, and I also recommended a tool called Little Snitch, which will actually help with this malware. In fact, this flashback malware, if it discovers Little Snitch on your computer, it actually doesn't install because it knows that Little Snitch will catch its connection. 
Another security theme this week is a bunch of mobile threats. There are a number of different mobile variants of malware and mobile vulnerabilities discovered and uh, shared this week. One of those vulnerabilities was a flaw in the Facebook app or a weakness in the Facebook app that you use on your iOS or Android phone. Well, a researcher actually discovered that Facebook stores its credentials locally on your mobile device in clear text. This means uh, one of two things. If an attacker can get a rogue application on your phone, he can actually get access to these clear text Facebook credentials and steal your Facebook login. And or if an attacker can get physical access to your phone, he can use you USB to steal these clear text credentials. This isn't a huge weakness or vulnerability. Nonetheless, it's something Facebook should correct in the next update for the Facebook app. In other mobile security news, there were also two Android malware variants that were highlighted this week. One is a new variant of Lina. This is a pretty old piece of Android malware that affected Android users who had rooted their phones. Basically, if you went to one of the alternate Android marketplaces, you know, not Google's marketplace, but some other place to get Android applications, you might install a Trojan program, which if you rooted your Android phone, it could take advantage of that root privilege to install malware on your phone. This week a researcher found a new variant of Lena which doesn't require a rooted Android device. This new variant actually takes advantage of a vulnerability in an older version of Gingerbread. So basically if you download a, a Trojan app on this old version of Gingerbread, uh, the app will take advantage of this flaw to gain full access to your phone and do lots of bad stuff. In other Android malware news, another research group also found a new piece of Android malware that actually is a bot trojan, or a part of a botnet. They call it TigerBot. Again, this is a piece of malware that resides in one of the alternate uh, Android marketplaces, primarily those found in, in China. In fact, it comes, one of the ways it comes is in a fake version, or I'm sorry, a full version of the Angry Birds space app that's been pirated and really contains this malware. Anyways, if you download this malware, uh, it infects your phone, gains root privilege, and it then uses SMS messages as a command and control channel to talk to the attacker. It allows the attacker to do things like record your phone calls, uh, send SMS messages, and steal a bunch of data from your phone. So if you're an Android user, it's very important to avoid uh, apps that are on non-Android approved marketplaces. I'd recommend you stick with Google's marketplace, even though even that marketplace has been infected before. I'll finish off the week with a quick update for what to expect during next week's Microsoft Patch Day. As usual on Thursday, Microsoft released their advanced notification post, which tells you what bulletins they're going to release for the upcoming Patch Day. Uh, this week, their advanced notification warned that they're going to release six bulletins. Uh, four of the bulletins are rated with a critical severity, and they fix 11 vulnerabilities that affect a menagerie of products, including Windows, Office, SQL, server, Forefront, Unified, Access Gateway, and many other products. So if you're a Microsoft user, you definitely want to pay attention to Patch Day. Uh, the big ones to, to worry about is bulletin number one will fix a bunch of flaws in Internet Explorer. I expect that to be a pretty critical patch to install. And also bulletin number four fixes uh, vulnerabilities in a number of different products, from some Office products to SQL Server to some development tools, which is pretty interesting. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to prepare yourself for next Tuesday. That's it for this episode. For more security news, remember to follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And you can also check out our WatchGuard Security Center blog, where we post many security stories and alerts each week. As usual, thanks for watching. And at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.